Hi everyone, Paul ISM, and welcome to another Inbox Review. So, this kit I've had for a while, I've been dying to review it, um, I'm finally going to get around to it today. Now, for those that might remember, in the 80s, uh, there were toys by Tomy called Zoids. Uh, most of them uh, were wind-up uh, dinosaur-type creatures, with a little pile that you put on the top. I love them, I know a lot of people who remember them love them as well. Uh, quite a fond childhood memory of mine. Uh, they were cheap, nasty toys, but they were great, great fun. Now, Tomy, uh, and a company I assume they're a part of called Kotobukiya, <laughs> I probably butchered the name, uh, have released a number of Zoids uh, actual kits. Now, they're on the same um, kind of build basis as Gundam and the Bandai Snap Together kits. Um, obviously, you can glue them together if you want, you can paint them, you can weather them. There's a whole multitude of different things out there. And I guess it's a more adult version. I don't mean in that kind of way, but an older version of the kits and uh, toys I had as a child. Uh, they are a true model kit. Uh, whether they clip together or not, it's still a model kit. And uh, These things look awesome. Now, there's a multitude of different things out there. Uh, I've got the Death Stinger Scorpion, which is a massive scorpion. Um, there's tigers, well this is a liger, which is supposedly a tiger. There's all sorts of creatures, a few dinosaurs. They're not cheap at all, uh, but they look very, very high quality. I got this from Japan Cool. Uh, if I remember right, it cost me a shade under £70. Not cheap, but when you think of the things like the Death Stinger, the big scorpion, that was nearly £140. So there's a, it's like the Gundam, there's cheaper ones and there's more expensive. Had a quick look in the box, it does look very good. Uh, they've even gone to the extent that there are motorised versions of this actual Liger. Uh, it walks, it roars, it lights up. Awesome thing, but very expensive. So I bought this one uh, and the Death Stinger, give them a whirl and see what they like. So I know nothing about the kit, I know nothing about the company, I know nothing about Zoids, I've never watched the cartoons. I just loved the toys as a kid. So a little bit of a flashback for me and hopefully. Uh, a good looking kit. Like I said, I had a quick look in the box when I got it a while back and uh, nothing's been opened so you're going to see my first uh, view of it. So let's get over to the bench and have a quick look and see what we find. So as we can see, uh, very interesting box. Like I say, this is the Zero Liger. Uh, so it's basically an armoured um, tiger type creature. Uh, very, very cool. Look, and this is one that drew me to it. There's several different variants of this. All very cool. If I could afford them all, I would. Um, but uh, for now, I'm going to stick with this one. So very, very cool box art. Like I said, I've never watched Zoe cartoons. I know they are there, um, but I've never really, I've never really watched them at all. Now it's a 72 scale, uh, scale full action plastic kit, high end master model. Now, as you can see there on the box, uh, that's without the armor on it, as you can see. So that's the Burr Liger. Now you can buy different armor for them as well. Some really cool ones, and like I say, there's several different variants of this. Go have a look on Japan Cool, uh, he's a nice guy, very good service, and some very, very interesting kits on that site as well. Uh, if you want to see a bit more of the range, go and have a look on likes of um, Hobby Link Japan and whatnot, and that will show you all of the different variants. On the other side of the box, we've got some details about the kit, so it shows you where the little pilot sits in, which is a fond memory of mine as a kid. Some of the decals, front view, rear view, with and without the armour. As you can see, it is a pretty cool kit. And obviously, there's all the armour off the model itself. So you build a skeleton and then put the armour on top. It's a very cool, nice box, nice sturdy box as well. Good size. Um, and like I say, that box art, lovely. Now, cut a book here. <laughs> if that's how you say it, there's a Tommy sticker right there. So I'm assuming it's either licensed or it's a part of them. I'm not sure. So let's have a look in the box that we got. It's a bit of a big box, it doesn't really fit in camera. So inside we have a coloured instruction book. Well, actually it's not, it's black or white, but the front of it's colour. Bit of information. If you read Japanese, knock yourself out. I don't. So we're a little bit screwed there. There's the built-up model kit itself. It's just screaming to be painted and weathered. It really, really is. Very cool. So I'll look at that later. Uh, sprues. So we got the power crystal. I know what that that is. Got a pilot, the claws, and whatnot. So we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and a couple. Oh, that's what look like decals. So we'll put those with instructions. So we've got them. So 29 sprues, but the look of it, for the most part, most are doubled up. So we should have half around, but you do get quite a lot in the kit. So what we'll do is we'll grab any at random and have a look. Now, like I say, I know nothing about the series. So I can't tell you on its accuracy or if it looks like it's supposed to, but all I can do is comment on the actual quality of the kit itself. And that is what I shall try and do. So we have two identical sprues, so we hope and lose one. And we'll look at this one. So, first impressions, it looks just like Bandai plastic. Literally does. Let me get this white bounce back. It doesn't like that white plastic. Um, it looks just like Bandai plastic. It's very well molded. Yep. I can't see any problems at all. <laughs> very nice. Detail is nice. There's cast detail. Cast detail. Like grill detail there. Yeah, it's just like Bandai. It really is, whether it's a... Yeah, so copyright Tomy. It's always a trademark of Tomy Corporate Company Limited. Under license, so it is under license. There we go, 2010, so it's six years old. And there we go, like I said, this is sprue one or two identical. We've got a little bit of flash on the actual sprue, but all the parts are nicely done. Uh, the cutoff points look nice and clean, easy to access. No problems there at all. Like I say, it's a clip together kit, so you shouldn't get any dramas whatsoever. Let me just angle that so I can see a bit better. There we go. And there we go. I have no idea what the parts are, so I'm not even going to hazard to guess. I'm guessing that's a claw, because that's what it looks like. But no problems there. Again, like I say, sadly, I don't know what the parts are. So we're going to have to guess. Now, these look like joints. Articulation joints. We've got two of the same again, so we'll get rid of one. So this is where all the movement's going to come from. These clip together, as you can see on the back. And again, nothing there. You got some hose detail depicted just there. So on and so forth. Have a quick look around the sprue. You can see more than plastic. Uh, plastic. Ooh, black plastic. Very nicely done, there's no ejector pin marks, there's no flash, there's no damage to the plastic, no simp marks. It just does remind me of a Bandai kit. It's that simple. So again, no problem at all. Like I say, all these parts are push fit. So there's locating points and tabs. And again, it's going to give you no problems at all, I hope. Hope to build this pretty soon, I've been dying to build it. I've uh, held up building because I wanted to review it first. And the review, something's just always got in the way. Again, two sprues identical, so we can get rid of one. These look like part of the armour. I'm guessing that other white one. I'm guessing all the white is the armour. I guess it's colour coded just like um, the Bandai stuff, funny enough. So I'm guessing the black is the actual skeleton itself. The grey are the intermediate part, and the white is the armour, that's what I'm assuming anyway. So these are all the parts, so hopefully, um, should you choose to paint, are easily recognisable and you can deal with them. Um, it definitely screams painting, it needs weathering. If you weathered this thing up to show some chipping, scratches, just normal armour effects, it would look absolutely fantastic. Sprue Q, uh, I do like it when these are actually moulded uh, with the cutouts in, because you can spot it a mile off rather than having to pick it up angrily. Etc. But again, no problems there at all. The plastic's clean. Any recess details, nice. Yeah, just needs the nubs cutting off. Bit of clean up. Like you say, I will be painting this. So you could literally, I guess you don't have to paint the exoskeleton. You could leave and just paint the armour, or you could go the whole hog and paint everything. For me, I think I'd probably paint everything and do it in some cool kind of scheme you could do allied or german armor schemes you could do you know full metal 
literally the options of these are do with them whatever you want. Unless you're an avid hardcore fan, you know, who's to say you can't do what you want? So let's have a look, a bit more armour. So yeah, with the head part, I recognise that from the box art. Again, we've got some recessed panel lines there. Looking pretty good. We'll go for all the parts, you can have a little look. Like I say, I have no idea what we're coming to. I know this is armour. I can tell by the shapes and the colours. But for the most of it, I have no idea what we're looking at at all. So I'm not going to waste time sticking around looking at stuff. I don't know what it is. But there's plenty of recessed detail for washes and uh, dry brushing, chipping, etc. So yeah, it would look really interesting painted up. I think it screams paint me. It really does. So yeah, very cool. Uh, I'm guessing this is more the articulated joints so of the exoskeleton. So it's a light grey styrene with ball joints there as well. So obviously this is what makes it movable. Again, some real nice recessed detail. Once you uh, even you just paint, uh, assemble it, and give it a wash, that'll make a difference to it. Some hose work there. Again, if you go for all the parts, you can see them all yourself. And see, for the most part, there's nothing there at all. These are the kind of reviews I find really boring to do because A, I've got no idea what I'm looking at, and B, there's no flaws, there's no problems. Nothing to pick up on, nothing to complain about. It's a real nice, funny styrene, it really is. A little bit of flash here and there on the inside parts. You see, it all clicks together. I'm assuming because the look of it, doesn't look like it actually clicks, not like a gun down where some of the parts you can't get back apart. So I think for the most of it, you'd be able to get this apart, painting. So you could pre-assemble, uh, then disassemble um, the painting. So, we've got two identical sprues again. No, we don't, they are different. It's a couple of black ones. Again, I'm not going to linger. It's the same story, nice recessed detail so on and so forth, so we'll just go around them quick very very nice no problems there, or well, there shouldn't be anyway and the other one, so again we got onto bigger parts now show how quickly on that can, there you go, there's all the parts that way bounce back And again, if you chose uh, metal finishes, look really, really cool. Very nice. We've got more armor. You got a lot of plastic in the box. Um, so value for money, hard to say. You're not going to take a long time building this out of the box. Uh, should you choose to paint it and weather it though, it is going to take a lot longer to do. So it depends how you're going to build it. So again, armour. Same story as before, lovely recessed and raised detail. No problems to report there at all. A quick little look through. It really is how the armor attaches again. These little location tabs just pushes on, so that'll give you no drama at all. Very cool. And more of the black parts, and these are getting a lot bigger now. Like blaster cannon there as well. Very cool. So you got a lot of potential, you really, really do. When the kit goes together, anything like it looks, you'll have no problems at all. Two identical sprues. Small parts. I'm not going to waste your time, I'm just going to pop them there so you can see them all. There we go again, no problem, located tabs on the back. Same story for most of it. Oh, we got a brown bit. Ooh. Ooh, and some vinyl parts as well. 
So we've got some brown parts. I'm just gonna leave them there for a second for you to look at. Again, nice recessed detail and raised. A couple of the blasters by the look of it. Again, same story in the back, location tabs. Bob's your uncle. We've got a couple of vinyl parts. These are soft vinyl. Is there a few more in the pack? Yeah, there's a few more over there. So these will be for movable parts as well. So again, made of soft vinyl plastic. As you can see, twisty. So there you go. I'll grab another bag of these so we can get through them. Yeah, two more, and they are identical. A lot of bags, I'll give it that. A lot of sprues. A lot of very high quality parts. Pretty cool. And again, very reminiscent of the Gundam stuff. So obviously this kind of build stuff is starting to become, well, I don't think it's starting, I think it's, uh, it's become part of the norm over in Japan. Obviously me building that uh, Gundam and Les and a few of the guys as well kickstarted it off on ISM a bit and a few other places as well, another few channels. I followed suit and started building Gundam, which is quite cool to see. So again, we've got two identical sprues. These are hard styrene now, this isn't soft. So we've got some hoses, um, some other things, some other joints, so on and so forth. Like I say, no one can pretend to know what they are. And again, okay, it's tabs on the back. We've got some bluey grey, yeah, same colour as before, styrene. Two identical parts again, so we'll ditch one. I do like it when there's two sprues the same because you get through the review so much quicker. Says lingering looking at 400 sprues. There's a clause. So there must be these, the armour, and those three little things we saw as well to go on, which is pretty nifty. Nifty? God, I've not used that word in a long time. So again, beautifully cast. Cast, it's not resin. Beautifully moulded. Paint them up in some uh, alkalines or extreme metals or whatnot. Give them some weathering, they look absolutely stunning. Very, very cool. So, we've got some red bits. Two of the same, I'll leave one on the bag. We'll get the orange piece in a second. So, now these are the caps that go over the moving parts. Uh, you can see them on the box art when you look. So, they're just push on caps, that obviously, cover up the ends of the joints. So again, there's two packs of those. And we've got clear parts. So this will be the visor for the uh, cockpit. Obviously these are a piloted uh, creature. So there's the, um, the cockpit visor. A uh, bit of smoke on there, like a smoky orange, that looked pretty cool. Clear parts, <laughs> same as everything else, just superbly moulded. Very, very high quality, so no problems there either. I'll put the clear parts back in the bag. Like I always do. The last two sprues. They're identical. Indeed they are. So these are gold coloured. They're wrapped separately. They are identical, as you can see. So we'll move one out of the way. Obviously these are plated. Um, so they protect them a bit more. But for me, they'd be bleached and painted up. Although it's not too bad. It looks like an anti-gold brass colour. Isn't too bad at all. Um, but for me, yeah, I'd strip them. A bit of bleach, get all that plating off, spray them up myself. But yeah, nice parts, very, very good. Plating's not too bad. And the last bag. So in here, we're not going to get them out because I'll end up losing them. We've got what is the power crystal, I believe. This is what actually powers the beast. We've got our little pre painted pilot in there, which. A little too bad, looks like he's wearing boxing gloves, but hey, who am I to criticise as I stab myself? Other parts of the claws, the teeth, oh, they're cool. Again, a bit of metal work, a bit of blood dripping off them maybe. But very cool. Claws, well, part of the claws, it's screaming to be stripped. Although that's not actually plated, that is the styrene colour. 
So again, yeah, they, this, it's just screaming to be painted and weathered. Nice parts, very, very nice parts. So they just have top teeth or they just have bottom teeth too? No, they just have bottom teeth. I haven't seen the teeth. Did anybody else see them? Hmm. Okay, it's weird. There should be two sets of teeth. I only saw one. We didn't have another gold sprue, did we? We've checked before. No. Okay. Hmm. Shows two sets of teeth on the instructions. We'll have a look. Yeah, you can see there. Two sets of teeth. Okie dokie. Let's get those decals out of the way first. Where did they go? Come on. Out you come. Right, the decals. Ah, oh, they're over here. That's why. <laughs> so a couple of decals. Don't look too bad. So... You don't get your decal and work out. Typical Ahama decal, so no problems there at all. Instructions in here we have a spare, <coughs> a spare part list, all in Japanese. Don't know if it's relevant to the UK. Most probably not. Instructions made on a nice glossy um, brochure type instruction book. Picture of the creature on the front and on the back of all its armor off, as you can see. Go to close up cam. Very interesting. Very cool. There's the core. There's the power. Pretty cool. We can send out those teeth. I didn't see any others. Do we have another gold sprue? And I've just been blind. Hmm. Do we have a sprue layout? Again, there's a creature itself. All in Japanese, unfortunately, so I've got no idea what it says. I'm assuming that's about assembling, disassembling parts. The same there. There we go, there's the parts layout. So, what is the part number? There it is there. Yeah, there is just one of them. Hmm. Okie dokie. That's very strange. I'm going to have a look through the sprues. Give me a second. Hmm. Okay, that's a bit weird and confusing, but never mind. Let's see what it says. So there, J. Ah, oh, that sprue is J. Okay. So where's the lower teeth? So apparently J4 and P8. So where's P? Bear with me, guys. Hope I'm not boring you. Oh, yeah, there you daft git. <laughs> okay, so helps you turn the sprue around. There's the lower teeth. Ah, hello, Paul. Right, so they're there. So, anyway, yeah, all the sprues are laid out there. So, you can see all your parts, standard procedure, and you're on to step one, which is assembly. Um, instructions look pretty clear. They're a bit confusing at first. Obviously, we've got all the legends here. I've got no idea what they mean. If you've got an Android or an Apple phone, you can use Google Translate. Put your phone over, use the camera, and it'll translate for you. Very, very useful. Um, the assembly steps do look to be a little bit busy. I think if you've assembled a few of these before, they may become a little bit more apparent and easier. But it's pretty clear. Everything's well labelled. Um, I think it's also got assembly order, which is pretty cool. So that'll help you along the way. Um, and it just goes through. So... You've got the different sections. I'm pretty sure Bandai does this as well. So you've got head, uh, weapon, bust, waist, fall, leg, hind leg. So you can literally flip using the side of the book. 
to the step you need. That's a nice little touch. Just have a look through. So yeah, it looks not too bad. Like I say, it's quite a busy layout, just purely because not used to this style of instruction book. I think overall, it's not too bad of a deal. You're going to spend more time cleaning up nubs than assembling on this, um, from my experience with Gundam and Bandai, but they will fit together well, it will articulate well. Just be aware, I'm guessing, I don't know, like Bandai, they don't like mineral spirits, they've used oil washers. Um, I think you're best to prime and paint before you do because the mineral spirits can eat into some of the plastic and make it crack and it's happened to me on my ATST, my Bandai one but the leg joints just all collapsed so yeah, bear that in mind but yeah, the instructions don't look too bad it's uh, it's not the quickest to build by the look of it so I think it might be a bit of value for money whether you choose to build it out of the box or not it's certainly uh, an interesting build there we go, and there's all the separate subsections now, you're assembling it all together. Several moving parts and components. Sadly we don't speak Japanese, so we can't figure that out. And there we have paint codes there as well. Does it give us a painting guide? Mm, kind of. Okay. So, yeah, overall the build assembly side of it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a quick build at all. I think it might take you quite a while. So I think it would be quite interesting. Now, this is where we've got the assembled Liger. Um, front and rear view with its armour. And obviously you can see its exoskeleton at the back. Now we've got paint call out in Mr. Hobby, Mr. Colour. So I'm assuming they're giving colour matches for the different. There's the red, yellow, for gold for the teeth, black, the grey. So if you choose to paint it, it gives you the colour options, and then on this side, we've got the uh, LIGO without its armour on, and again showing you the different colour callouts. There's the power core for it as well. Pretty cool looking thing. This drew me to this thing. Uh, I thought it was a really cool looking creature. This is decaling, how to decal. And there we go, we're at the back. So, yeah. Like I say, I thought it was a pretty kick-ass looking uh, creature. Um, there's the pilot inside as well. So that's how these things work. That's what I remember as a kid. Like I say, there it is without its armour on. And I know you can buy different types of armour. So it's several different uh, movable parts. All the joints are fully articulated. You can have it in a running pose, sitting, standing, swatting, whatever you want. Um, they do look good fun. So I'm hoping to build this well, I don't know, pretty soon. Uh, I've got a lot on my plate at the minute and a lot of builds that are ongoing. But overall, uh, it looks to be a pretty good kit. It's different, again, it's like Gundam, the Bandai stuff. If you're looking for a change or something different to build or do, then great, why not give it a go? Uh, and you might like it and enjoy it. I don't think these are something I could build all the time. Um, I think they would bore me eventually. But as a in between or a uh, mojo builder, um, I think it's good. It's good to do different things, especially in the hobby. It'll help your skills. Even if it's just cleaning up nubs, because you're going to get used to cleaning up the uh, sprue you've got off the sprue connections. They call them nubs on these, on the gun down in there. Uh, it's going to get good to sand, and I'll give you that. And uh, our sanders are great for uh, cleaning these up. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, but like I said, they are different. Uh, not everybody's cup of tea. Um, hoping you like the review. It's not the most in-depth review because I know nothing about them, so I can't go in-depth saying, oh, that part looks correct, or this is that, and what have you. So, it was a quick look, inbox review. Look at the plastic, look at the instructions, look at any extras you get in there. And to me, it looks a good kit. And uh, once I built this, I may add a few more to the stash. Got the Death Stinger behind, which looks great. That thing screams to be painted in metallic colours. Uh, and hopefully... Um, we might see a few other people building these things. I know Jason uh, Lysus has a few in his stash. I think he, he's eager to build his. So maybe me and Jason could sort something out at some point. A little bit of a buddy build or something. But for the me, I definitely want to paint this one. Um, there's some very cool looking armour uh, aftermarket to get for these. And I really want to paint it. I'd probably still go a similar looking scheme. 
maybe some tiger stripes on it, uh, a lot of metal work on it, what have you, to make it look interesting. So there you go. So there's the Zoids Liger. If you want to check them out, have a look on Japan Cool. Uh, they're not the cheapest kits in the world, uh, but the service from Japan Cool is very, very good. And uh, if you want to have a look at all the rest of them, go to Hobbling Japan, because there's some on there that aren't listed in the UK. They're quite hard to get a hold of in the UK, to be honest. Uh, but have a look and see if any catch your eye and uh, let me know. So as usual, leave any comments or criticisms down below. Then hit that like or you didn't like, let me know. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down on the video. If you give us a thumbs down, tell us why. Don't just be a chicken and do it and run off. Uh, if it's something you don't like, please let us know. We're trying to improve it or work on it, what have you. Uh, obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're not sub to us already. Check out our live shows on a Tuesday and a Friday and a Saturday, the first of every month, like it is tonight. So don't forget tonight's live show. Uh, go check out inscalemodeler.com, which is our forum, International Scale Modeler. Check out International Scale Modeler on Facebook. And obviously, myself and Leo and Ultimate Modeling Products, so check out umpretail.com. So there we go. I hope you liked the review. Let me know your thoughts and any feedback. And uh, we'll be back with another review later on in the week. Uh, the new show, and I'll be there for a couple of updates through the week as well. So there you go. So thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon.